want to talk to you about one of my favorite new technologies I'm seeing with .NET. There's this thing out there called Polyglot Notebooks. And this is a lot like Jupyter Notebooks. In fact, it's built on top of it. It lets you do data science notebooks using C Sharp. I'm going to show you what I mean and just walk you through why I like this so darn much. So here I am in Visual Studio Code, and I've got a lot of notebooks here. This is actually code for my Polyglot Notebooks talk that I give at conferences. But I'm going to create a new notebook. Okay, so I'm going to go in and hit Control Shift P, and uh, right, right there, my most recently used command of Polyglot Notebook, create a new blank notebook. Now I can do this because I have the Polyglot Notebook extension installed, uh, but once you've done that, you can go in and you can say, hey, I want a new notebook. I'm going to choose either a DIB or an IPy notebook. Uh, I'm going to choose my default language. C Sharp is what I want to work, work with. And now I've got this interesting little cell here. Okay, This is a code cell. So I can say uh, string name equals Matt Eland. And that's just a piece of C Sharp code. Now, see, I've got this nice little coloration and the like. If I want to go down here in my next cell, add a new one, and say console uh, right line uh, name. And it writes out my name. Well, that's kind of cool, a little trivial, but I can have these little variables and I can even you know do some basic math with them. So I can say int uh, product equals x times y and I could console right line this but let me show you a cool trick. If you just end your notebook or your cell with an individual variable, no semicolon at the end, it's gonna automatically print out the value of it below, which is really cool. I can declare a class if I want. So I can say public class person. Oops, <laughs> shift enter will uh, end your cell and I was not ready to end my cell. Uh, so I'm gonna say public string for first name, get set public string last name get set. I've now defined a class. My future cells, so I can say var uh, person equals new person. And I'm going to use my nice little initializer there. Again, shift enter is my fiend today. Uh, first name equals Jimothy. And last name equals Bobbert. And there's my person. Okay. Now here's a really cool thing. If I was to do a console right line person, you know, we're gonna see the full namespace and type of this uh, this guy. So it's not gonna be looking very interesting. So in this case, submission number six. This is actually the sixth cell I've run. So that's why I see that. If I was to run it again, same thing, right? But if I was gonna run the cell again, go back over here. Well, in incremented that time. However, if I was to go over here, I could say public override to string. I'm going to return interpolated string, first name, space, last name. Give this all a run. Uh, oh, forgot the return type. Uh, yep. Yeah. Run the same code over here, Jimothy Bobber. Okay, cool. So I can redefine my class, re-execute the cells. I don't have to run my cells in order. Uh, whenever I run anything in Polyglot Notebooks, it actually gets registered into my variables so I can use it between cells, which is really neat. And here's the super, super, super cool part about this. So if I just have a person and I just wanna log that person below the cell, you might think it's gonna say Jimothy Bobbert afterwards. But what it actually does is it gives me all of the different properties of this. So if Jimothy Bobbert had an age, I'm going to default everybody to be 42 years old, because why not? I create Jimothy Bobbert. I'm not specifying his last name, or sorry, his age. Now I go down here and I log him. I see all of the public properties. Super cool stuff. This is really just scratching the top of this iceberg here. Uh, this goes really deep. It's really cool. Uh, one of the neat things about this, I can, I can put in Markdown. So I can say, hey, I am just Markdown. This is really cool stuff. And so I can actually mix together documentation and code, and I can give people these really 
well-documented either experiments or proofs of concept or just ways of showing them or teaching them aspects of .NET, aspects of our code on .NET, uh, working with an API, working with data science, machine learning. These are all use cases for this. And I'm able to use C Sharp, but I'm also able to use many, many, many other different languages. It's called Polyglot Notebooks for a reason. You've got C Sharp, F Sharp, HTML, JavaScript, Cusco, Query Language, Mermaid Diagrams, which I love, PowerShell, which I need to learn more of, SQL to get data right out of your database, and you can actually pull the data out using SQL or KQL, and you can then take that data from uh, in memory and move it directly into C Sharp or HTML or JavaScript and be able to actually work with it there. So super, super, super cool stuff. You can take your notebooks and work with a bunch of different technologies to accomplish whatever you want. I've got a lot of cool stuff about it. This is really just scratching the surface of this. Uh, but I'm super excited about Polyglot Notebooks and where it's heading. If you want to check it out, well, A, you can go out to my website, which, of course, I can link to because, you know, Markdown. Uh, that would be AccessibleAI at AccessibleAI.dev. And that should pull up my neck. Ah, silly Matt being lazy and forgetting to put the HPS in front of it. But there we go. Uh, that gets my, uh, my my stuff out here. And if we look over here, Polyglot Notebooks. I've got a lot of stuff out there on Polyglot Mo Notebooks and even more coming. So please take a look, see what you like, see what you don't like. Let me know what you're interested in. I'm happy to teach you more. Uh, but this stuff is super, super, super cool to me. Um, you want to get started with it, you can go out and go to the extension store and just search for Polyglot Notebooks. Uh, you do need to have .NET uh, SDK installed for it to run, uh, but that's a free download that works across operating systems as well. I really love this stuff. I think it's amazing. I hope you do too. Let me know what you think.